Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am joined today by Callie Hughes, and we are talking about a topic that really hits home with so many of us, people-pleasing, perfectionism, burnout, all of the things. Callie, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to talk about this today, but before we dive in, tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do. Sure. So my name is Callie Hughes and I am a nurse practitioner and a self-care coach. And I run a business with my business partner called Brazen Coaching. And what we do is we work with female entrepreneurs to create a business and a lifestyle that fits into their ideal vision for their life. So I am really excited to talk about perfectionism and people pleasing because those are two major hurdles that most all of us really have to work through, especially as we're starting our businesses and growing our businesses and trying to tackle life and motherhood at the same time. Right, exactly. Because a lot of times when the novelty of it wears off, I've seen that people can get burnt out very quickly because you're all encompassed. You're go, 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 and it will burn you out. So let's dive right in. So where do you think that this tendency for us as women, as us, as moms, business owners, where do these people pleasing tendencies even stem from? I think it goes all the way back to how we were socialized as little girls because I think as girls, we're really taught to take care of other people and put other people ahead of ourselves and to not rock the boat too much. And also there's a big emphasis put on perfection and, you know, we need to always be putting our best foot forward and at usually anything less than perfection is perfection or excellence is kind of shamed a little bit in one way or another. And so I think that's where a lot of that tendency comes from. And so it really has a deep root in us and it continues popping up throughout our life in different ways. I noticed that when I you know, was a student and a nurse, like my perfectionism was a strength, I think. Like it really made me super attentive to details and really focused on excellence. But it also kind of burned me out when I was doing a lot of different things at the same time. And then the people pleasing reared its head big time once I became a mom. Yeah. Like that just really changed everything. So, and I don't think I'm alone in that. (laughs) No, you are definitely not. And I appreciate that, that you mentioned how perfectionism isn't always a bad thing. You know, it can be a strength, but it's a double edged sword. It can be a, a tool or it can be a weapon. And You're right. You know, growing up, we're often praised for, oh, you did so good. Oh, you did this. I mean, just look at, okay, if your grades are a certain level, then you get on the honor roll. You know, it's constantly praise, praise, praise for those achievements. So yeah, that really, that does make sense that it's so deep rooted. Mm -hmm. And then we become so fixated on that external validation that, that that really starts to cause a lot of problems, right? Yeah. And I think the external validation, like always striving for that. And then also coupled with us being praised for putting other people ahead of ourselves and taking care of other people and their feelings. um, I think that that really conditions us from a super young age to always be looking outside of ourselves 
and it makes it so hard for us to tune into our own internal um, landscape and figure out what we want, what we like, what makes us feel good. And that's kind of the breeding ground for burnout, I think, because I know that when I went through a, you know, big life crisis with burnout, it was partially, I think, because I just didn't have any frame of reference for how I was supposed to feel because I was just doing what I had always done, which is trying to give 150% at work and then trying to also be a good mom and a good wife and a good friend. And where does that leave any time for me to slow down and even just ask myself, how am I feeling? Am I tired? Maybe I need to take a rest. Maybe I don't need to go and do all of these above and beyond things. Maybe I need to just relax for a weekend. Like there was no time to even think about that. Right, right. And when we don't even let ourselves have the time to think about it, yeah, it's hard. But I, I love how creating that frame of reference for yourself, like actually just taking the time to check in to even acknowledge that you're going through this. Because I think it's easy when you are experiencing burnout to not realize that you're in such a burnt out state. Yeah. It, and it's like, the way that I describe it to my clients is that you think you're doing really good until you hit the wall. It's like right before you're hitting the wall, everybody around you can be like, oh, she's spiraling. But you don't realize it yourself because you're like, I'm handling it. I've got this. Like, we're good. And then you don't realize how close to the cliff you are. And then that one thing happens that throws off your equilibrium and you just crash. Yeah. And that's when it's like the crisis and you feel like you just cannot handle anything and you're just so exhausted and it all kind of hits you at once. Yeah. And for so many of us, I think it's hitting rock bottom that's the wake up call that we need. Like, oh my gosh, wait, wait a minute. I do need help. I do need to establish some boundaries. What advice can you give our listeners for, okay, you recognize that you're burnt out. You recognize that you're having some of these tendencies. How do we start to overcome them? So I can really only speak from my own experience firsthand, but therapy was a huge thing for me being able to kind of have that neutral third party to give me some perspective and help reflect back some of my own thought patterns that I didn't even think about but she was like that's not necessarily a super healthy way to think about things and I'm like oh okay that's a good point so I think having a therapist or a coach or somebody who is just a really empathetic listener who can support you as you're going through the process of unpacking why you feel this drive for perfectionism and people pleasing and then starting to build the boundaries around that. And it's definitely it's got like a few different facets, especially when you're a mom and you're a business owner, because it's not really possible to do that whole like quiet quitting thing yeah. when you are your own boss. And so it's like all of the typical career advice, a lot of it doesn't apply to us. So I feel like we're kind of in this weird gray area where it's like, I don't really know what applies to me, what doesn't. A lot of the advice doesn't work for me. And so I don't know what to do. Yeah. So what I work with my clients on is establishing boundaries in three different areas of your life, just to keep it super simple. So your business, your personal life, and then your household and your relationships and that kind of a thing. So in your business, you want to kind of 
create some bookends for your day if you can, because it is so easy to just be like, oh my gosh, I just love everything about my business. I am completely obsessed with it. And then spend every waking free moment on your business. And for the longest time, people would ask me like, oh, what's your hobby? Like, what do you like to do? And I'm like, I like to work in my business. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. work is your hobby? It's, you know, so that was kind of my first clue of like, oh, maybe I need to put some boundaries here. But if you just create like a starting ritual and then an ending ritual for your day, that's a really easy way to put super visible bookends on your work day. Um, and then just try to avoid like email in your bed and like right when you wake up or right before you go to sleep. Um, try to take a break while you eat lunch. You know, those types of things really can help you during that time that you're working to have moments where you're able to tune into yourself and just like do a check-in. So that's the first thing I recommend people do in their business. And then household-wise, this is always a really big one for my clients who are mompreneurs <laughs> because how many of us are running a business and then we're also the default caregiver and we're also carrying the lion's share of the household labor on top of it all. So that's kind of a whole issue that we could spend like forever talking about, but I recommend talking with your partner and figure out how you can make a more equitable division of labor in your home so that you're not shouldering all of the mental load and you're not like the taskmaster, schedule keeper, everything for your family. Spread that out because he's capable of handling his tasks and you're capable of handling yours and then communicating about the rest. And then my other thing is um, I call them my effort hacks. <laughs> And it's kind of like the, the little things in your household that you decide to intentionally leave imperfect. So that's kind of like working on the perfectionism piece a little bit. So for instance, I was the laundry person in my home and that was like my task. And it kind of got to the point where like, I wouldn't have time to wash and dry and fold and put away all the laundry. And the perfectionist, uh, perfectionist in me would be like, oh, well, I don't have time to do everything. And so I would put it off and then like, nobody would have clean underwear. And <laughs> it would like be this whole big, like I have to do eight loads of laundry over the weekend kind of a thing. And I decided one of my own effort hacks was going to be, I'm just going to do one person's load of laundry. And then it's going to be in the basket and I'm going to put it in the room and we're not going to worry about folding it or organizing it. And it's like, it's clean, it's in your room and it's all yours. Good enough. So it's just those little ways that you can be like, good enough is good enough. I am not going to spend big amounts of my time and energy and mental space on this menial task. And uh, yeah, so those are just kind of some really simple, practical ways that you can put some boundaries up to kind of keep yourself in check and not let that perfectionist tendency or the people pleasing tendency, just like run amok and run your life for you. Those are amazing hacks. And I love too how you touched upon mental health. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mental health is one of those things that used to be almost taboo in a way. It was like, oh, if I have to go to therapy, that means I'm not not achieving well. No. If you had, you know, an illness, you would go to your doctor. 
If your mental health's not okay, it's okay to get help. If you're feeling burnt out and overwhelmed to the point where you're not coping with, with life, with things, it's okay. Sometimes just getting called out by a neutral party, being able to verbalize how you're feeling to a neutral party can make such a difference. So if you're struggling mentally, get help. It's okay. There is nothing wrong with it because that will make you a better mom. That will make you a better business owner. That will make everything in life so much easier. And circling back to a few of the the points you made, I love the idea of putting bookends on your day. For me as a business owner, that was a game changer because you're right. We become addicted to work. We become addicted to chasing those shiny objects. And if you don't put some boundaries up and some hard stops, you're going to be constantly working. You're going to start to let other things fall by the wayside. You need those boundaries in order to thrive because it, it, it will cause burnout. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. And two, you know, the communication piece. I think that that is one of the the biggest keys because no one in my house can read my mind. I don't know about your house, but, <laughs> you know, just communicating, even your kids, you know, hey, you know what, I need some help around here. We're a team. And I ask my kids for help all the time and they have their little duties that they do. It's like, all right. You know, you guys are more than capable. If you're capable of making a mess, you're more than capable of of helping to clean it up because, you know, you 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 can obviously do this. If you can make a mess, you can clean it up. You know, the trash bag does wonders though. That's a very strong motivator for my kids in my house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so hey, I mean I can clean it up and I'll just put everything in this bag here, or you can put it back where it belongs. It's up to you. I don't care. So <laughs> I'm the main <laughs> mom, but that's okay. But I just I love okay, I'm a mean mom too. Yeah. I do the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. Like can we just normalize that? It's okay. It's okay, yeah. you know? You don't have to follow through with it. But sometimes just the threat causes them to be a, a little motivated. And also I love your your effort list. You know, <laughs> finding systems that work for you. Finding okay, what's good enough? What is my good enough that you know what? It things are getting done. It may not be perfect, but it's good enough. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Like, why are we stressing so much about, you know, something like laundry? It was like, why? Why is this such a source of stress in my life? So you modified it. You made it work for you. And it's a beautiful thing. These are such great tips. And moms listening today, take just one of these. Start with one thing that Callie taught you today. Implement it. And notice the change. Notice how things start to get a little easier, how the burden isn't so bad. It doesn't have to be perfect. Life is meant to be enjoyed. It's a journey. So start embracing it. Kelly, this was a fabulous conversation. Where can we learn more about you and all the good stuff you're doing? Yeah, so you can check out my website, brazenwomen, with an E, dot com. And there's a ton of free resources that you can download. Um, There's a list that you might find really helpful if you thought this um, episode and the tips and tricks were helpful for you in your own life. There's a free download called 17 Ways to Simplify Your Life and Create More Balance as an Entrepreneur. So it has little check boxes of just like little things that you can work on one by one in your everyday life and it will just help you put some more boundaries around different parts of your life so that you have more balance and you have more enjoyment and fulfillment and you're not just constantly chasing that carrot so you can check that out and then You can also um, check out, I have a podcast um, with my business partner called The Brazen Podcast. So you can check that out anywhere that you listen to podcasts. So yeah, that's a little bit about how you can find me. Oh my gosh, so good. So be sure to grab your checklist, listen to the podcast. And Kelly, thank you again so much for taking time out of your schedule to share your value with our listeners. 
Oh my gosh, I had so much fun. Thank you so much. Same. All right, until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.